Hi, my name is Lara. Welcome to my channel, Inner Goddess Guidance. I created this channel to assist people on self-healing and journey towards self-mastery. I was a teacher for a long time. <laughs> and now I am a personal coach. And I also discovered that I am what is called a divine feminine on the twin flame path when I awakened um, this last fall. I have been given this mission to really come and help other people on their path. And through my own um, experiences and insights and the skills, tips, tools that I've gleaned in my lifetime, um, I present them to you here for your use should you find them useful. Every single person is different. We are all healing from different things. We all have different processes. I do not believe that there's one way to do that. Do you think there are some tools that tend to be universal and helpful? For example, journaling. Journaling is a time when you can really take time to reflect in um, a purposeful way. And when we slow down to take a look at something, we take time to process it, we gain insight. I also believe that um, affirmations are incredibly power powerful. Again, they can be tailored to your own needs, which is why I like them. And finally, I think that gratitude is a really well-known and useful component in creating a happy and healthy life. So using those three things, um, I suggest that you get a journal and you can follow along any of the the videos that look like they might be helpful to you. Um, you can always watch a little bit and see what the topic is for that day. Um, I do draw a goddess card or a goddess oracle card and I'm going to be bringing some other cards in as well to pull energy so the goddess energy guides us for the day and then I try to pull some cards that are really focused on our healing and so you can use that goddess energy um, and the healing uh, focus to really do your own work throughout the day. Of course, if you have your own oracle cards, you can do exactly the same thing. And that's what I did when I was on my journey and how I came up with this process. So today I want to talk about pearls. <laughs> so, you know, pearl, we say pearls of wisdom. I don't know if you've and we've heard that term, right? Um, and the pearls of wisdom are, are what we gain, um, you know, what we learn really out of a difficult situation. It's something that's valuable, that is an insight or, or something that we gain and we take with us for the rest of our life. And usually they're from um, difficult learning that we went through. And so I've been thinking for well over a year about um, the symbology of the pearl and how I thought about many things in my own life um, in terms of me creating pearls. And I think that this analogy might be useful to you as well. And so I wanted to tell you a little bit about oysters if you didn't know how pearls are created. So not all oysters are, are oyster pearl oysters, um, but the ones that are, what happens is that a parasite or some irritant gets inside the shell of the oyster. And then the oyster has an amazing response. I like to think of it as its resilience response, something that we all have as well. And the oyster begins to protect itself by coating that parasite or that irritant in what is called nacre. And it is basically the same um, stuff that, that it creates its shell from. So the inside of the shell is also mother of pearl. Um, so the pearl is formed as it coats and coats and coats and over time, um, what we call a pearl is formed. I have thought a lot about suffering in my own life and nobody asks for suffering but also nobody gets out of life without suffering and one of the greatest sort of um, gifts of suffering is compassion it is through connecting our own pain and our own experience with pain that we can then connect with other people and feel true empathy for them when they are going through uh, their own suffering. And it reminded me of a poem that's very, very special to me. Um, 
and actually co connected to my beloved. So I wanted to share it with you. Um, it's called Kindness by a woman named Naomi Shihab Nye. And the story behind this poem is that she and her husband were on their honeymoon. They had saved all their money and off they went to Mexico and Central America. And somewhere on their trip, they were robbed and all their money was taken, their passports, everything. So basically what happened is they were on a bus and somebody got on the bus and robbed the whole bus. Um, they ended up on the people who were robbing shot one of the people um, on the bus and left him at the side of the road. And she'll reference that in this poem. So the story goes that they got back into a town. Uh, they had nothing. Her husband went off to um, try to make contact or figure out something to do. And as she was sitting at a sort of a cafe table, she wrote this poem and it is quite possibly her most famous poem it's called kindness before you know what kindness really is you must lose things feel the future dissolve in a moment like salt in a weakened broth what you held in your hand what you counted and carefully saved all this must go so you know how desolate the landscape can be between the regions of kindness. How you ride and ride, thinking the bus will never stop, the passengers eating maize and chicken will stare out the window forever. Before you learn the tender gravity of kindness, you must travel where the Indian in a white poncho lies dead by the side of the road. You must see how this could be you, how he too was someone who journeyed through the night with plans and the simple breath that kept him alive. Before you know kindness as the deepest thing inside, you must know sorrow as the other deepest thing. You must wake up with sorrow, you must speak to it till your voice catches the thread of all sorrows and you see the size of the cloth. Then it is only kindness that makes sense anymore, only kindness that ties your shoes and sends you out into the day to gaze at bread, only kindness that raises its head from the crowd of the world to say, it is I you have been looking for and then goes with you everywhere, like a shadow or a friend. When she was, when I was listening to her talk about that poem, she basically said that as she was sitting there in the cafe, she heard a voice speak that poem to her. So it was almost like she was channeling it. And you can look it up online, you'll find it on YouTube, just Kindness by Naomi Shihab Nye. And uh, maybe I'll find that and leave it in the description box for you so you can hear her story and um, hear her read it. So coming back to the idea of pearls, kindness to me and compassion are the pearls that are formed from our own suffering. And there are certain things in life, certain understanding, certain experiences that, you know, we, we, we need to glean by going through a, a difficult situation. And so I, the other day, bought some oyster pearls because I was thinking it would be kind of fun to open them up here. So I bought them off Amazon. And they came like this, and they are, these are 10 freshwater cultured oyster pearls. I did open one up already. See, they're vacuum packed, so they don't stink. And then I sort of think that they um, they somehow stick the, the pearl in there. I don't know that I think it's exactly natural. Nevertheless, um, I have them. I'm going to open a few here. Oh, and when I was going online to do the research, there are these amazing videos. I'm, I don't know, maybe I'm late to the party, but um, there are these oyster opening 
um, videos where they open the oyster on camera and show the pearls they find and they actually show the people like you know feeling through the the body of the oyster to to eject the pearl and then washing it off and all of that and there was one woman I saw who had gotten a very large oyster I think it was like a freshwater oyster but it seemed to be I don't know size of a dinner plate or something it was very large and she opened it up and there are over 20 pearls in there but they were freshwater pearls so I know you can do uh, you can find the real ones too um, like I said I'm not sure I I'm convinced totally that that these are <laughs> part of me thinks that they were just um, shoved in there somehow and glued the <laughs> glued the thing back but this is what it looks like and at least um, from my I have a stuffed up nose from my position it doesn't smell so bad <laughs> And then um, you just go in somehow. Oh, I think I've seen her kind of crack it open here. And then I'm just using a... Oh, I wanted to do this for you. I wanted to show you what I'm doing. There we go. Um, so somehow you got to get it so you can get something in there. And then, wow, they're kind of hard to open. Who knew? So, see why I'm saying they just stuck it in there? <laughs> anyway, uh, we got a nice pretty pearl anyway, right? So I'm not going to open up the rest of them on this, but this would be, a, I think, what they call a peacock color and there's pearl and so to me it kind of helps when I'm going through a difficult time and I'm feeling pain um, to keep in mind as I'm feeling it that it's not um, it's not just random, that there's a lesson, that there's a pearl of wisdom, that there is something that will be earned. I'm earning something. I'm con I will convert that pain into something worthwhile. You know, so for example, my own healing journey, it was very painful. Some parts of my awakening, some parts of this journey are very painful. And yesterday, I mean, I had these oysters now for several days waiting for the message from spirit to actually deliver this message to you. And, and then yesterday, I went through a mourning process. And it was the recognition that if you have really cared about someone or something in your life and you are saying goodbye or you lose it somehow it is damaged it whatever for whatever reason when you are processing through that morning it it is because we have felt so deeply about it that we feel the suffering you don't suffer when you don't care it's easy to walk away from things it's easy to say goodbye when you have nothing invested especially when it comes to emotions and feelings in your heart so we can live our lives sort of afraid of ever suffering and and closing ourselves off from it but we're denying ourselves the um, we're denying ourselves both sides of 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 the experience. It's sort of like a rubber ball, you know those rubber balls that we would buy in the um, gumball machines. 
if you only drop it from a short distance, it's only going to come up a short distance. But if you drop it from a high, high distance, then it's going to bounce back higher. And I sort of think that it's like that in our lives. If we've loved well and we've loved deeply or we've cared about something like a career or a house or a pet or anything, if we have felt deeply, then we are going to go through some suffering. And maybe we have a choice about that. Like maybe if you've lost something very important to you early in your life, for example, you might as a as a reflex or a response or like defense, you might decide that you're going to avoid ever really feeling deeply again. Because if you just stay um, only feeling a little bit, you're only going to hurt a little bit. But if you feel deeply, you're going to hurt deeply. But to me, The size of the pearl is dependent upon how much we invested of ourselves. And I guess I came to the conclusion yesterday as I was sitting in my own morning creating my own pearl that I would rather feel deeply and love fully and invest completely, then spend my life in a state of numbness or, or just not investing too much, just not caring too much because of some fear of, of, of future pain. So, um, so yeah, that's what I wanted to uh, present to you today that maybe well the next time you are going through some pain you might want to think in that moment if you can that you are um that yes it hurts allow the hurt but also know that that hurt is because you loved deeply or because you cared deeply or because you invested in something deeply and then know that what you gain is the capacity to connect to other people, to be compassionate, to understand the value of kindness and connection. And, and know that your pearl is all the more beautiful for it. Because like that big oyster, I think we're creating lots of metaphorical pearls. And I intend to have a really beautiful necklace, <laughs> a large strand of beautiful pearls rather than a wimpy strand of little tiny things. So something to consider. So today I pulled out some um, new cards. I'm still going to give... Um, spirit the opportunity to come through the the goddess oracle and this comes from amy sophia marashinsky and rana janto and i really still am loving on these cards and i definitely haven't pulled them all out yet and then we're going to pull from the kuan yin oracle by alana fairchild it's a, a small deck and kuan yin of course is the goddess of compassion so Actually, let's just do that one first. So this comes from the Kuan Yin Oracle. It kind of makes more sense to go in that direction. And, you know, <clears throat> this particular um, deck that I bought a while back before I ever even knew I was going to do something like this, um, I got the Pocket Edition. What I like about this is they're, they're small. They could go with you anywhere. But also... All the information is right on the back of the card. So it is a little different in terms of, um, you know, most Oracle cards have the same back, right? Like this, these do. And then you just have the image and then you read out of the book. But these are the images and then on the backs uh, are the information. But it kind of makes it easy to do. 
so it might be a good deck for you to choose if you uh, if you you know relate to Kuan Yin. So spirit and Kuan Yin, please be with us right now to hear messages from you to guide us for our highest and greatest good. With open hearts and open minds, we ask to receive messages for our highest and greatest good on our journey toward healing and self-mastery. Thank you. The threshold. At the threshold you stand, before you lies a way of being that is beyond fear. It is a sacred passing through a karmic veil into a new life of empowerment, peace, and unconditional love. You are coming home to love. What a beautiful card. Not only a beautiful image, but what an amazing um, message to us. At the threshold you stand, before you lies a way of being that is beyond fear. It is a sacred passing through a karmic veil into a new life of empowerment, peace, and unconditional love. You are coming home to love. So beautiful. Yeah, you know, got to walk through, got to pass that threshold. We all do. Um, Joseph Campbell calls it the cave you fear to enter. He says, in the cave you fear to enter lies the treasure you seek. So even though it is hard to cross a threshold or to enter into a cave, and nobody's going to court suffering <laughs> by any stretch, um, actually a few people actually do. So I take that back. There are people who actually, yeah, I can think of several that I won't go into, but yes, people actually do court suffering. But my point is that uh, in emotional suffering anyway, most of us don't. So um, when, you, when you are willing to trust the divine, cross through that threshold, what you find is the treasure. What you find is the pearl. Okay, and then I wanted to pick a Buddha Wisdom Divine Feminine card. This is the heart of Kuan Yin. So just an extra message from Kuan Yin for the Divine Feminine. Collective, please. These are tiny cards, so if one doesn't flip out quickly, I'll just put them down and hold on. Okay, we'll just set these down then, spread them out, and this one. Don't let worldly temptations lead you astray. And that reminds me that I saw today a really, um, I thought, great tarot reading for daily energy. So today is um, it's the 17th. I think it's the 17th. Let's see, make sure that I'm right about that. Yes, today is Tuesday the 17th. And if you go on Evolving Spiritually, Kayla's channel, you're going to see a reading that um, talks about basically that. She talks about, um, she does the reading obviously, but she really gives, I thought, a great talk about um, staying true to your own values and vision. And that's how it relates to what, what I do on here in terms of staying true to your own values and vision and recognizing when somebody isn't offering you all the, of what you seek um, so that you can make choices that are really in alignment and lead you to your, your happiness. So 
Kayla evolving spiritually, um, the date would be um, July 17th reading. I think it's called something like um, Good But Not Great. Yeah, watch that. She, I, I love the what she said. She said <clears throat> something that stuck with me. She said something like, know that when you are choosing yourself, you are choosing the divine. Know that when you are choosing yourself, you are choosing the divine. So the, the other side of that is know that when you are rejecting yourself or denying yourself, you are rejecting or denying the divine. Anyway, I really love that, that pearl of wisdom from her. Okay, so one goddess oracle card, please, spirit, for, for us today, for our highest and best good, for our healing journey. One goddess energy of the day, please. Okay, so, <clears throat> so um, these two fell over upside down. This one fell out right side up. So I'm going to take the right side up one, the one that was face up. And this is Lilith Power. Wow. Which kind of reminds me that we don't really gain power either without having to stretch ourselves, do we? Like, you never get stronger if you don't lift more and more weights, if you don't push past your limits. So we'll find out what Lilith has to say. I dance my life for myself. I am whole. I am complete. I say what I mean, and I mean what I say. I dance the dark and the light, the conscious and the unconscious, the sane and the insane. And I speak from myself authentically, with total conviction, without regard for how I might look. All parts of myself flow into the whole. All my divergent selves unite as one as I listen to what needs to be heard. I never make excuses. I feel my feelings deeply and profoundly. I never hide. I live my sexuality to please myself and pleasure others. I express it as it needs to be expressed from the core of myself, from the wholeness of my dance. I am female. I am sexual. I am power. I was greatly feared. Lilith was originally the Sumerian queen, queen of heaven, a goddess older than Inanna. The Hebrews took the goddess and transformed her into the first wife of Adam, who refused to lie beneath him when having intercourse. Hmm. She insisted that because they were created equal, they needed to have sex equally. When Adam refused, she left him. Thereafter, in Jewish mythology, she was described as a demon. Interesting, because she wouldn't um, sort of subjugate, right? Lie beneath him. Lilith appears to tell you to take back your power. Where are the places you have lost or given away your power? What beliefs do you hold that deny your power? Have you been told that powerful women never find mates? Or that women can't have power because that would make them unfeminine? Have you been teased, shunned, ostracized by others when you've stepped into your power? Are you afraid of misusing your power to dominate or manipulate? 
Lilith says that the way to wholeness for you now lies in acknowledging that you're not connecting with your power. Then, second, coming to terms with and accepting your power. Hmm. So today, in your journal, you might look at and ask yourself the question, where are you giving away your power? Where have you not claimed your power? And you might start looking at where is it that you feel like you are powerless? Or where is it that you feel like you are victimized? Because when you look at where you might feel that, that is where you need to take back your power. And in thinking about balancing the masculine and feminine, divine masculine, divine feminine energies inside of us, There is an element, and I'm pretty sure I saw it on the divine masculine side of the traits. And I think it was power was on that side, although I can totally see right now, at least, you know, thinking about it here with you, that, you know, divine feminine has a totally different kind of power. But I think we tend to assume or consider only male power, which is why maybe traditionally and throughout history, women were not encouraged to be in power and they were victimized in many cases because um, that kept them subjugated to men. So you might want to take a look at, at that. I think that we're in a time when women are claiming their power. And just like the other day, I pulled that um, one of the goddess energy cards that was about anger and rage and, and talked about how I thought we were coming to a way of expressing our anger in a healthy way. I think power is um, similar, but I do think there's a key um, that was mentioned in that, and it was about um, not using your power to manipulate. Like, can you stay in your power in an authentic way, accept it? claim it um, and not use it to in any way manipulate or undermine or do anything out of alignment with healthy love. So the key is, you know, for me anyway, on this journey would be claiming my power, understanding what it is, if that's in communication, if that's in my action. Um, and of course, it's mentioned in their sexual power. Um, because of course, women have known for a long time that that's powerful, right? And used that to get what they wanted. And I'm not saying any, I'm not making any judgments, but that is true that we know um, that for a lot of men anyway, that can be a way to manipulate them maybe. Um, but anyway, my point being, can you stay in alignment with healthy love and claim your power? You, know, you might want to take a look at, at that. Hmm. So in terms of your affirmation for the day. You might just say, I am powerful in a healthy way, or I claim my power in a healthy way. I am, I'm thinking about the threshold one. I am, I am, I walk through the threshold and look, you guys, this one says, it is a sacred passing through a karmic veil into a new life of empowerment, peace, and unconditional love. So claiming your power to move, and that goes back to um, the, the evolving spiritually daily for today, because that's what she was really talking about, is recognizing what is in alignment with you and claiming your power to make a choice, and not just by default. 
um, sort of accepting less than uh, that. So understanding your power. So I can move through my life. I can move through thresholds in a powerful way. I can claim my power. I will step through the threshold today and claim my power in a healthy way or in a way that is aligned with healthy love. Okay, so thank you very much for showing up today and <laughs> oh, those silly oysters. Just know that if you, um, if you order those <laughs> online, you may be getting little oysters that have little pearls. Um, just somehow, I don't know how they did it, but it looked to me like it was just like dropped in there somehow, shoved in there. Maybe they let them be open a little bit and then they like feed them the pearls. Anyway, it was still kind of fun to open it up. And obviously pearls are made by nature. And in that way, oops, in that way, it's different from all the other gemstones. Well, I suppose amber is made naturally too, but I, I kind of like the fact that an animal makes a pearl. Anyway, well, is it an animal? Anyway, you know what I mean. <laughs> Some sort of living organism, you know, anyway. You guys have a beautiful, wonderful day. I'm going to go off to sit by a river. Whatever you do, wherever you are, I hope you have a great day.